Are you going to see Usher show live yet? You going to see Usher show? Yes. I heard it was amazing. I know. It's amazing. Know. It's different than last year's. This is a new one. It's completely different. You went this year too? Honestly, I, went, I was going to go the last time I was there, but they were charging $700 for tickets that were, I just couldn't see myself. Yeah. It's a different show? It's, yeah, it's a different show. It's a, uh, he is the most elite human being. Like it is everything you could ever <laughs> He up there on skates? Bro, I, he is a pure entertainer. It is worth. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. It Every, is worth. Whatever you yeah. got, just yeah, go yeah. ahead. I sure like that, he worth it. No, 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 he like guys, he, he, he is, you almost, you'd be like, you'd be looking at me like, you know, it's my, you know, humbly, it's my friend. I trained him and shit like mm -hmm. that, but it, you still be like, oh, nigga, you, I, you're a real star. Like it's, everybody don't, isn't a star. Just cause you popular and you famous, you don't make gotcha. you a star. Yep. So I'm gonna ask you this. This nigga's a star. So like it's different. So He's got, a star. We got Michael, right? We got Usher and we got Chris Brown. Oh, but is Chris Brown more talented than Usher? I can't, I won't, I won't debate it. I, some things are off limits to me. I just, I, I just love. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? I know where you stand though, but that's fair. I know where you stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like certain things. Are off limits. Yeah, it's hey, like. Hey, I know where you stand. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, certain things off limits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you just gotta yep, be yeah, like, yeah. Yep. That's my man. Yeah, that's yeah. my man. Yeah, yeah. Chill out. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you just kind of gotta go. Yeah. But when you see him, you almost like, oh, you see, bro, been a star since he was 14. Yeah. You don't really know. Yeah. Nothing else but be an usher. The world has treated him like usher forever. You know what I'm saying? And I, yeah. It takes a lot to register like Charlie Sheen. Like that nigga's been mm. like we they don't know our reality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like what do you mean? Right. Like what do you mean? This fool don't know what a, 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 a truly a slow month is. And now do you feel like do you feel like the <laughs> shows when you do residency, do you feel like those shows are they put more effort on a nightly basis into those shows than they do when they go on tour? Man, I don't Have know you ever about that? on tour. Yeah, I don't know him on tour. Uh -huh. um, I've never seen anything like this. Mm. I've never seen anything like All this. Right. And like you, it's one of the moments when your lady's singing, you kind of go, I go ahead. Oh, no. Nah. You got to, it's right like, with you. no, no, no. It's like, you see it. You like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, so, not, so. it's no fighting back. You got to go. Yeah, that's right. No. So yeah, you, yeah, I'm so, a man. Like, so yeah. you, no, you so get Kiki Palmer fast. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, let's talk about that. All right. All right. Hey, let's start. Let's yeah. start. Hold on. Let's start. Hold on. I'm ready. Let's start it. Okay. Let's take it. Let's carry over. We're not going to get back in that. Let's get back into it. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's get back into that. All right. Hey, so you giving Kiki Palmer a pass? I'm personally not giving Kiki Palmer a pass. And. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. When I say pass, though, right? I'm only talking about. Um, I'm not really talking about what she's wearing. I'm talking about. Being in a relationship with someone and swooning over another man. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, nah. I, cause, cause what she's wearing, what she's wearing to me, I don't think that was the issue. Well, I mean, the, you it, think it's so? part of it. I don't think, it, I don't think, I don't think the outfit wasn't the issue. It was just seeing my girl swooning over another man. And my, and my girl's a celebrity. My girl not no regular girl. Right. So my girl is accustomed to seeing people that's popping yeah. and seeing, she been a celebrity for 20 some years, right? So as, as she's my girl, I'm thinking like, ah, you know what? I would just expect her to just like keep herself composed because she, she, she's not like a nobody. Yeah. You feel me? Mm -hmm. She's not like a nobody. And I feel like that's where his issue was. Why you don't give it the pass? Cause what I talk with the foundational principles I talk about in my house, that's inappropriate. Mm. Cause I'm, it starts in my home. Everything starts mm. in how we communicate at home. So if you go against something, you know, that that's out of line. I, I would never disrespect you like that in public, you know, with a woman. You know what I'm saying? If Rihanna or somebody brought me on stage and did some, you know, there's a line that you got you can never cross because it's too so, far. You know what I mean? So there's a foundational principle that s starts where we leave my house or we leave our home. Hey, hey we're hey, alive. Music. So J uh, Janet Jackson, she does that on oh. her stage, on her uh, her sets. First mm -hmm. and foremost. If she pulled you up stage, are you going on stage? I'm not. I, if Janet? Yeah. If Janet pulled you up on stage, your woman is going to allow you to go on stage. Yeah, see. If Janet Jackson. But there are nuances, though. There like, are nuances. There are nuances. But, like, I, I can't I can't interact with that's what, Like, just me being up there is part of the show. Yeah. Every it's show. It's enough. Every show. I don't do anything. Right? In that case, like, I can't be faulted. Especially my woman is like, yo, go. 
right? Again, I don't, I don't think homie had a problem with her outfit. I'm pretty sure there was texting. She, I don't, that's not the problem. The problem is just seeing my woman swooning over another man. No one wants to see that. And what women would say is like, you see how you said in my house we got principles, right? What people would say was, well, like, she's her own woman. Yeah. He probably don't have, he, you know, he probably, like, he, you know, she's a celebrity. We only know about him because of her. Yeah. So she should be able to do whatever she wants. That's kind of the narrative. Yeah, I don't think that you can do whatever you want no matter who you are. When you choose to get in a relationship, you there's a, a mutual respect and understanding of what that person is comfortable and uncomfortable with, and you know that going into that situation. And not only they had a, they have a kid together, so obviously there's some, some type there's, of respect. They got yeah. some type of there's some type type of like who we are as yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, I got you. you know what I'm saying? This ain't like we just hooked up and we dating and we 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 out here like we together. You know yeah. what I mean? And like she's parading him around and made him known to be her man, right? Despite mm -hmm. her celebrity versus him. So you got to take the part of insecurity that comes with the lifestyle that you live and her being a celebrity and these people having access to you. That comes with the territory. So you got to know your man is capable of that. And you, you can't dismiss it. You can't dismiss that. Yeah, yeah. You can't then go on the radio two weeks later or TV talking about I got my own money, got my own this. Right, like that's just to me. That happened like, after the fact. Yeah, she yeah, just yeah. recently did something. Oh yeah, because like, I was literally just about to say, well, that's kind of the 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 um. I, we don't know if Kiki Palmer feels like that, but I guess yeah. she does feel like. I don't know yeah. if she feels like that, and we all none of us know. It's speculation, yeah. but to each his own in their own house. Mm -hmm. But you asked me about mine. Yeah, certain principles and things that we you know have mm -hmm. fun by all means live your life. But I, with respect, I, I know it's the behavior, but. The, the outfit you don't think was an issue because I don't think there's nothing wrong with the outfit going out with your man I don't, I don't. going out with your man I don't going out with your husband like what her, going out with her right man, I have no problem with that but the fact she went out like that not nah, what, what I'm saying is maybe he did feel a type of I, way about I, the I, outfit right had to but I don't think he would have said anything about the outfit if she was just out and about he would just held that but I think the behavior in the outfit is 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 what he made him do that because he's like damn like why is she acting all like thirsty for this dude that's what it was right i know he usher i know he usher but i still expect my my woman kiki palmer to like act like she kiki palmer to be honest i mean when i when i first and foremost assuming that they are together his comment wasn't a comment that they were together and i have to kind of like side with the he didn't like the swooning because the outfit alone, you live with your partner, you live with your partner, you live with your partner. My girl ain't never went on a trip and I didn't know what clothes she took. I, did I. Like that was never a surprise to me. Like, whoa, where that outfit come from? If, they, if they're together, then he knew about the outfit. So he was more so upset about the swooning. My only thing is, I don't know if they was together during the time. I feel like they might've already been going through some turmoil. Okay. And I say that because the only thing he had to lean on was you're a mom. Yeah. He didn't say, hey, yo, my girl can't be out here doing this. Mm. Right. So, like, it was like, yo, the only thing that we got that we share is this kid. And that's the only space where I could really, really insert my jealousy or my 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 insecurity on the situation. I can't sure. say, like, hey, yo, my girl can't be out here doing this if we not, not together. together. I got you. So, I feel like they might have been going through something already. Yeah, I got you. Because, like, how she had this outfit and you didn't know she had the outfit? Yeah, we don't. I think we don't know that. We it, don't know. We don't know. It's a lot of speculation because they they've said nothing. But it's just a it's one of those things where the internet runs with stuff. It's unfortunate. He put out some stuff and he got lit up. He, yeah, you know. Like he caught he, some bullets. He wild though for saying something. Though. I would never say yeah, that in public. No, he went nah. public. He, he got to handle that internally so, in house. So I'll say this though. He was wrong in the sense of saying something because at For the sure. end of the day, as a man, it's your job to cover your household. Yeah. And he didn't cover her. Yeah. yeah Even yeah. if she was wrong, he didn't cover her. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. and like, that's he tried where, to expose her. Yeah. He tried yeah. to expose her. He tried to expose you know, her. he, 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 it it's was. Not what teammates do. Nah. nah. It's not what teammates he wasn't yeah. a teammate. Sometimes your teammate, you know, do, do something wrong. Hey, we got to, yeah, we'll we talk about that shit on, <laughs> when we get to the top. Yeah. You can't yeah, be flailing yeah, your yeah, arms yeah. over the camera. Come on, bro. That's what I'm telling you. Let's do the intro. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. 
Yeah. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road, the rest get left behind. Yeah. yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance. I stand. I'm a cold pole for no. four and a fucking white sun. I give it all to the spot for my stand. If it's been done before, then I know I can. Okay, okay. I'm on the rise, I'm trying to keep a level with yeah. it. She want my time, she okay, me okay, 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 okay. I want to rise trying to keep this level head. Yo, what's the deal, y'all? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. I'm Boss. And this is another episode <laughs> of the number one podcast in all of Los Angeles. Mouse. As you can see, we have an incredible guest and a friend of the show on. We have brother Ron Boss Everline Mouse. on today. Um, man, let's just give you a little rundown about Boss. Boss is the owner and the founder and the CEO of Just Train Fitness. Um, when it comes to Los Angeles and we're talking about the fitness community, this is an, uh, one of the sturdiest pillars of the entire fitness community. Um, he's been holding it down, incredible entrepreneur and businessman as well. And if you ever seen that C4 drink floating around as well, he probably did some sort of campaign <laughs> to put that in your hands as well. But boss, thank you for joining us. Man, man. I'm actually happy to be here. I'm, uh, this is exciting for me. Oh, excuse I'm, me. I'm, super I'm so happy. sorry. I missed the best, the best, the most important title as well. Father. Dad. Yeah, Come absolutely. On. I'm excited. Husband. The number one, yeah, husband, all yeah, those things. All I'm those excited, things. man. I'm excited to be here with y'all, man. On, box. Your success, the things that you guys are doing, I, it's an honor for me to be here, to truly to, to see you guys and understand what you guys have built. For, for real, man, this is exciting. I love what you guys are doing with your platform, um, and I'm excited to just sit here, share a little bit of uh, space with you guys, and um, listen, maybe learn a thing or two, maybe share a perspective, but... You know, um, I'm a fan. I've, I've watched, I've saw some topics, and I've seen some success, and I, I love being a part of it. You know oh, what man. I mean? They say success yeah. leaves clues, right? So yeah. I want to be a part of that. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So go, go ahead, dude. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, so I just want to say this, man. Every time I run into you, bro, you're just so hospitable, right? You're just so welcome. I'm welcoming and warm, and um, you just been a good person since since I met you, every time, bro, you offer me game, you offer me knowledge, bro. We sat down in the office one time, talked for like three, four hours one time, just about anything, dog. Um, so I just appreciate you just being who you are, bro. And everyone I talk to who speaks about you, speaks about you in high regard, Man, right? Lot, so yeah. if, if, it's, if it's coming from multiple people, right, it means that much more, Man. all right? So I just want you to know that before we get into the show, and I forget to tell you that, I want to tell you that. Thank you, man. It means yeah. a lot to me, more than you know. Yeah. Yeah, it means a lot to me, man. Yeah, For man. Real. It's an honor Thank to be you. a homie, dog. Thank yeah. you, man. I feel the same way about you guys, yeah. man. I'm happy to be here. Boss, I got a quick rapid fire question for you. Yeah. What does family mean to you? Man, it's my lifeline. It, it is truly my purpose on life. Um, I don't, I, I don't know who I would be without family, and that's my kids, that's my brothers, my sisters. Um, the shortcomings of my dad, my mom, family is the pillar of who I am. I tell my brothers all the time and my family, I'm like, they're like, man, we so proud of you. And I'm like, well, you should be proud of yourself because I am an example of the people I'm around. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so thankful because my family sows some seeds in me. So that's my family is who I am. And I want to represent that to the highest capacity and mm -hmm. power that God has put me on his earth to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you, um, mm -hmm. when you being a family man, right, being the father of, um, three children now, yeah. right? Is that public information? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. cool. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Three, um, and, and you are a former athlete, yeah. right? Tell me how your, your approach to just work and your work ethic changed once you got married, once you started getting serious about family and, and commitment and, and children. How did, how did that, that shift? Because being an athlete, you worked hard. Yeah. Right? You've always worked hard. But what is the difference between the work you were doing before and after? You know, I think it's realizing the responsibility um, for people that didn't ask for certain things. And, um, you know, always being a team player, right? That's always been it for me, um, is always trying to figure out how to work with the team. Rather, you know, one of the things I tell people all the time, I don't got to um, like you, I got to love you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and that was super, super intentional in my life. And I think um, – with my kids, it's it's shifted my whole perspective that they didn't ask to be here. 
So it is my responsibility and duty to, to, to make sure that I am living up to my full potential so mm -hmm. they can live up to their full potential mm -hmm. um, and have a true example. You know, a lot of times when you're having success, you know, in, in our community, I, used, I asked all my friends, and I, you know, not to drop names, the people that are successful, say, are you scared? Right, like something's gonna go bad, right? Because we've been conditioned. I'm literally about to ask you that question, right? Yeah, now. like you're like, I'm, I'm scared. Doesn't work like that. Yeah, it's Plus like. Text me at four o'clock this morning. Yeah, I'm like, are you scared about what th your life is doing well for you, and you're like, this is going too good. Something bad has to happen, and I'm like, that condition I have to break because I don't want that condition for my kids. I don't want that condition for my friends, and it's all too good. It's like it's all too good to be true. Right. You wake up, you work hard. You're like, man, I'm dedicated. But this is a condition. And so my responsibility is to break that con condition for my kids and break that condition for myself. Um, I, I don't never be broken. But if I can do a little bit more for them so they don't have to worry about the same things, I don't care. Like, I don't care that my kids don't have to have the. Uh, the the it fact like the man I'm from the da 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 nah, yeah, you gotta yeah, be yeah, from yeah. the we always gotta you know I don't want my kids to feel like they gotta come from the hood to yeah. be valued we want to see black excellence at its highest level mm -hmm. and we should be talking about that and so I want to be the example of that man mm -hmm. for my kids and it's, it's a lot of work you got so that's the responsibility you know what I mean when you don't want to do something you're like man they didn't ask for this you know what I mean and so it's just like always on button for me and it's it's you know sports played a big role in that for sure I was. When I was thinking about that thought, though, I wasn't thinking about the um, be like being scared to. Um, I'm more so thinking about being scared, like of the responsibility of having not not of being of success going. Excuse me. I'm not thinking about you being scared of being so successful. I'm thinking about is it scary thinking about the thought of having man now three kids to look after a wife, these businesses, all of these things. Right. So it's like. To me, saying that from someone who doesn't have a wife yet, who doesn't have any kids, who doesn't own a home, like, and maybe I say that from from trauma, from experiences in my life that make me feel like that. But yeah. I would feel like sometimes the thought of having all of that on your shoulders could get kind of scary. I would say, you know, I think you're built for it when you're in it. It's just like when you were playing a game and you catch that ball on a punt, you like, man, I got to get there. And no, nothing else matters between here and getting there, right? And so, yeah, you're going to get tackled. You know what I mean? But yeah. as an opportunity to score a touchdown every time you touch that ball. Mm. And so the responsibility for you is, yes, there's fear, but we we stand, we look fear in the face and we we go right at it. Like, I don't, I can't think about the fear or the scarcity in that moment. It's like, this is what I signed up to do and this is who I have to be always you know what i mean because no one actually cares yeah. you know what i mean like when you really start to think about it no one actually cares it's really up to you and so that's my that's something in in myself that's something me and my brothers talk about that's something you know my, my our close group of friends it's like yes it's scary but we look mm -hmm. fear in the face and go all right well i'm gonna meet you right there then you've yeah. done it you guys have done it you guys are you know made it to the most elite level of sports you know what i mean and you, yeah. you you're about to get ready to go there that goes out the door right because you, we stand in the face of adversity that's what men do and yeah. women too right yeah, and, yeah. And, and so but the thought is there though the, the thought, thought is there but you it, it can't live yeah yeah but because it, it'll keep you stagnant i also think that as we as we knock one thing down we become accustomed to that and we just knock no, the next so, thing down so yes. when, you, when you look at everything as in totality it feels overwhelming right yeah yeah, yeah. you just start getting like whatever success you have it becomes normal to you mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. and it's like it's like playing on sundays like at first it's just like yo can i do it we were just talking about this earlier yeah. and i had this outlook when i was playing it and i always thought to myself man I never had the feeling like I belong here. It was always like, oh, I'm out here with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But hindsight, when I look back now, it's just like, yeah, I belong there. Yeah. You know? And I feel like we take one thing at a time. We get the house, okay? Having a house, managing the house becomes normal. And we have one kid, and yeah. that becomes normal. And we have two True. kids, and that becomes normal. And everything becomes part of your lifestyle, right? Yeah. And we were talking to Leticia, uh, Felicia Latoro, like yeah. last year. And I remember her specifically saying that, yo, she was going through a point where she tried to separate everything in her life, right? But when she realized she could combine everything and everything could coexist together, life became easier, right? And I think that 
you know, as we try to just combine everything, it'd become easier. But I understand the fear. Yeah. I understand the fear. I think too, if I could, just like a perspective, it's like the person that wins the lottery was never uh, prepared for success mm. and they blow it all. Mm. You're mentally preparing yourself for all the things that are coming, mm -hmm. right? So when you get there, you're already at that moment mm -hmm. of where you're supposed to be. But a person that hits the lottery, they're like, oh, I'm gonna go get all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But a yeah. person that works hard for their money, yeah. they know exactly mm -hmm. how they wanna go yeah. do what they wanna do because it's already yeah. been mentally programmed right. in their head. Same with having kids, you got 10 months to prepare. You, yep. We're getting ready to buy a house, you go through the process, yep. you know exactly where your finances lie. Yep. All these different things yep. start to align themselves when God tells you it's time mm -hmm. or when you start to go down that path. So the fear will naturally start to go away and you'll start to understand those processes that get you there but this isn't lottery this isn't the lottery you don't this ain't no scratch off right yeah. so this is not coincidental yeah, yeah. right you working your ass off for it so fear lives there it mm -hmm. just won't stay there yep mm. so some for our audience um just just a little bit more about you something that we sat down we talked about what's really important is you are in a space of where we're trying to go right you are a father you're a husband um you're in shape you're a you businessman you know, all of these things are things that y'all like, y'all really in shape. We, we, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in shape. I can work out all day. Y'all, y'all got six packs. So, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Trap nine. Nah, nah, nah. Boss be up when it's dark in the morning. It's not a credit. Talking credit. to the camera, sweating. Yeah. 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 So yeah. like, you know, well, you know what? I say this more. Than, to cut more, you off. more, more importantly, truth be told, and I think what the most impressive thing is, your mind is in shape. Yeah. Yeah. Your yeah. mind is like you have a very, very strong mental, bro. Yeah. Like a crazy strong mental and. Um, I don't think you achieve those things that you've achieved without that. So like, just give us a little background on, on that. Where'd that come from? And then how do you continue to strengthen that without letting it break? So, so most people don't know my mom died when I was 11 and my dad left. And, and I've only told a few people this in my life that are really close to me. My wife would say I was mad at my dad. And you have to get over the anger of people that people tell you have done you wrong. So when my dad left, he, didn't, he only did what was natural to him. He didn't do what he didn't know, right? He did what was, all right, well, I got to go provide, right? And so when my dad left, people go, you angry, you angry. I'm like, I'm not mad, right? So that was the mental fortitude. I lost my mom. My brother got killed. My brother got killed when I was 18. And then, you know, my dad left, and everybody was trying to make this story about how angry I was at my dad. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not mad at this dude. My dad came to my wedding, and he was like, I was like, man, just, you know, straight up question. And we're in a car, and I'm like, He's like, man, you done good for yourself. I'm like, appreciate it, old man. And he's like, I'm like, just why you leave? And he was like, I make babies, I don't raise them. And my homie went in the car, he's like, damn, man, I feel so bad. And I was like, no, nah, dog, that's the truth. Why do we run from the truth? He just told me the clarity that you need, right? Like, why, he can't give me something he can't provide. He doesn't want to provide, right? So that, mo that mental is like, you have to be prepared for those tough things that people have to say back to you because that's their reality. Even though I want something different, some will go, man, that's wrong. That was the cards I was dealt. So you have to deal with what was dealt. And I love this man for that truth, right? I don't love, I, I don't love him less. I love him more because I know where he stands. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And for me, that was all the clarity I needed because I, I know who that man is. I know he works hard. I know he, I know he's a bull in a china shop. I know all these different things. And I know genetically I am him. And I have to be very careful with some of the things that he's done in his life mm. to be intentional with mine. And so I identify with that and I make sure that I'm in tune with that, but very, very well in tune with the idea that this man only did what he thought was right or right or wrong. I can't be holding baggage and mad at somebody about their truth and their reality. How do you sit from that perspective saying though, cause just five minutes ago you said, yo, your kids, they didn't ask to be here. You didn't ask to be here. That's my, because of what happened to me, that's my responsibility. Mm. So now I have been engulfed myself into this. I, want, I put my kids to sleep every night. I make mm. sure that I'm, tra I'm not traveling at certain times as much as I can, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's, that's I, it's intention. I live with the pure intention that I'm gonna be a dad first. Mm -hmm. I own that, they didn't ask for that, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I mean? And so, but there's no bitterness or anger towards my dad mm -hmm. at all, you know what I mean? I handle him as- How long did it take you to arrive at that place, bro? Because that, that's like a very mature outlook and perspective on that. And I, I mean, I would, if I didn't have that relationship with, that I've had with my dad, I would feel 
upset. I, I, I don't know. I don't, but, but, you know, like I can understand because you have. Yeah. I haven't. That's, I, I, you yep. see what I'm saying? You only know to have know. the relationship yep. with your dad. Yep. I don't know to have that relationship with my dad. So I take things as they are, not what I want them to be. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And so, you know, it, it creates conflict in most life, but I, I'm, I'm going to take it as face value. This is what it is. This is what I got to deal with. Cool. I can't ask you for something you don't want to give because then we're not either equal. We, you, you're not happy in the space that I'm asking you to be in anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fly you out here and spend time with me. Nigga, I don't want to spend time with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care what you got. He don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, none of that matters. Hey, man, I'm proud of you. You did good for yourself. Great. He don't care about none of the shit that we have. And it's, hey, man, I love you. You know, but my uncles were great. I, my brothers have been great. I, the void of father wasn't. Okay, Miss. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you where'd you find that. that, that. Yeah, my brothers. Okay. You know, my oldest brother, that's why I say when they look at me, okay. they, you, that's the pillar. And okay. then my brother, you know, I didn't grow up in like the, the best neighborhood or the worst. What's but the age difference for y'all? My, my mom had nine kids. So all, my oldest brother is 10 years older than me. I, okay. I went and lived with him. and um, That's my father figure. Yep. Yeah, so all the way down. Okay. And so when my brother got killed, um, he was a street dude and great, great human. You start to understand like, okay, what, what path of life you want? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I tell people all the time, you, you got a chance and like, I, you got a choice. You know what I mean? Like, right. and, um, I just, I made a choice. I was like, I ain't gonna go do that. Yeah. I, had, I had an opportunity to go do that. Of I was course. like, I ain't gonna do yeah. that. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's what it was. It was like every day I'm like, this is what I'm going to focus on. This is who I'm going to be. My dad, to this day, and you know, it's actually really, really great, and I love him for it. I went and saw my dad, and um, most recently, and he, he's great, and he's like, "Hey, man, my dad's still making babies. He's mm -hmm. seventy some years old, and he like, yeah, I a, yeah, I'm still having but kids." You being a father now, though, what kind of conversations are you having with him about that? Because, like, I mean, be, like just man to man conversations, like, yo, because you're now fully present, aware, and that's like trying to beat a dead horse. You. I hear you. <laughs> some conversations you. aren't to be like I, yeah. I I say this not out of like some conversations you can't have with people they're not ready and they will, they will never understand your perspective. No matter how much how profound we can be like, hey bro, look at what I'm doing because of what he don't care. Yeah. He has no like, yeah. it doesn't matter. So I would yeah. just be talking to somebody that isn't in tune with my values you yeah. know what i mean yeah, yeah. and because of what he's did what he's done has made me better and there's no anger yeah. like i literally stand on that i literally would go to a family reunion my wife would be like my dad would be like this she's like you being mean to him and i'm like all right well i don't i turn my back i'm like well, i ain't got nothing to talk about right, and she'd be right. like you being mean until finally she's come to the conclusion like oh he ain't mad he just understands yes yeah. understands i just understand like he yeah. don't want that he's not seeking that relationship you know yes. what I mean? So what yeah. am I seeking then to be disappointed right. and then be right, bad right, right, to right, my right. kids right. and then be bad to my wife because I'm seeking something that can't fulfill me anyway. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? He can never fulfill me. I'm seeking somebody that can't fulfill me from the beginning. So now I'm not, so now I'm up in arms and upset with, with the people that have chose to be in my, you know, not my kids, my wife chose mm -hmm. to be in my life. Now I'm bringing all this pain and bitterness to her for something that isn't resolved. Right. right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not fair to her. Yeah. I have to, you got to resolve your issues before you start to, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with other people in this capacity yeah, yeah. in very close quarters, as we all know, you know? So, yeah. So I, you didn't need a therapist for that? I, the gym is my therapy, bro. And okay. brotherhood, these conversations. Okay. Yeah. You know, for me, it's, it's you know, um, no disrespect to the, to the therapy world at all. I just pride myself on not always being adapt. Like, it doesn't have to be my situation. I just need to be a part of the conversation. Okay. I want to know what's going on. So that's just how I work. Because yeah. again, I grew up great family, just turmoil. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And turmoil. You, yeah, that was shit going on. That's a, <laughs> that's an interesting word yeah. instead of trauma. Tr trauma. It, uh, Not it, trauma. It, it wasn't trauma. It, that's, it, it, it's, <laughs> that's why I say it's an interesting word, because I think people kind of throw trauma around when they really mean a little a little turbulence it was turbulence man you know it, 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 everybody like we get like i feel like it's unfair to our parents when, when nobody knew no we all are navigating like navigating life struggles right so like as you get in a relationship and somebody go well they you know how hard relationships are man yeah so now we mad about what didn't work when we know damn well these relationships now are hard 
we dealing with our own ourselves and we got to constantly work on them. So how am I going to still be mad? But people just never want to look back at themselves. My mama, before she passed away, said, you point a finger, three point back at you. So I'm always self-observing. You know what I mean? Like I'm always trying to be the best human, but it was, it, it was that it was turmoil. It wasn't trauma. You know what I mean? Like, all right, I was on a bus stop and the police was on a, running around. I'm like, they, I knew they was looking for my brother just ran. <laughs> like, yeah. like I know what's happening. Everybody asked me what's happening. I'm like, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. That ain't trauma. That's just shit. That's just what we was dealing with at that time. You know the what I mean? The trauma is what comes after the turmoil. The, the trauma is a is a result of the turmoil. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, you know what I mean? It's yes. Yeah. The, yes. The yes. Days. No. For sure. Um, I don't want to be insensitive, but like I just think that sometimes people people use trauma to try to illustrate an extreme situation when I don't think everyone's situation is extreme. Well, that's not I, relevant. I, I know. Yeah. But I feel, <laughs> okay. like, I feel like we've gotten to the point where it's just so easy to toss out trauma now, yeah. right? Yeah. Because yep. it's a blanket, it's a blanket word over any type of adversity turmoil that yep. you just haven't done the work to fix. Yep. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, and I think that talks to mental weakness, not mental health. Hmm. Big difference. I think people that deal, deal with mental health are chemically imbalanced. And I think that people deal with mental illness are weakly imbalanced, right? They aren't standing and looking at adversity and taking a chance to hmm. fix themselves, right? Rather, whatever it is, they want to find a cop out and say, well, it's trauma. I, don't, I got, and they want, and again, it may be insensitive, but somebody has to be able to say, hey, bro, it, it's up to you to fix you. <laughs> yeah. It's up to you, Man. sis, to fix you. Yo. Like, I don't care how you do it. It's up to you to yeah. be in a healthy relationship. It's up yeah. to you, bro, to nobody. It's mental health versus mental weakness. Sure. You know what I mean? And I don't mean no disrespect because I, I deal with people that have mental, yeah. you know, health issues. But I think right now to that word, I think people are miscon like it's a misconception of the two. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't mean any disrespect, but I mm -hmm. think it's just that that moment of like, man, I, it's like, man, I can't lift these 10 pounds. You can at some point. You just can't right now. Mm -hmm. you know? You know what I mean? We see it all the day. You, you say, yep. yeah, don't get defeated because you can't now. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. at some point. It just takes a little bit of work yeah. and all of that. I want to know your thoughts on the dynamic on social media between men and women, right? As a leader, as people look up to you and look to you for what you think, right? What, what, what are your thoughts on just the gender wars, right? The um, hyper-independent, extreme feminists that – um, that supposedly seem like they don't need men. And then there's uh, extreme red pill men that seem like, yo, they just want to be better and dominate women, right? What are your thoughts on that? Do you feel like there's space for both of those places? Or do you feel like people should try to figure out common ground where they can work together? If I'm being honest with you, 100% on that particular topic, I don't even bother myself with it because I'm married and I just be like, I, I just like to, I, I really just like to listen so, and just really don't involve myself. It, like mm -hmm. I, we can have a debate about it Correct. if it's like something that topic, if mm -hmm. I'm sitting here and it was like, okay, you gave me a topic and it's like, right. oh, that's fun. Right. Um, but day to day, like when I look at social media, um, I, I understand the facade that people are playing. Okay. You know what I mean? And I think on all of our, like, you know, people are playing. Okay. They, they, like that's how I look at it. Like people are playing. They like, can't be serious. They can't be like they're playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, these people are playing. Like these, there's no way these people are serious. Like okay. in any perspective. So for me, right. I'm, I take social media. Like I think it's a real job. I think social media is a platform that is. But for some of these topics, I think people are playing. Like mm. it is like attention. Like it's I think it's clickbait. I think a lot of it is is attention seeking yeah. people that. Could be wrong. I don't know, completely be off, but I just think that some of these, because some of these topics aren't to be discussed. Like sometime I'm like, well, why are you talking about that right, right. openly? Like, uh, like I, it's, I. But again, I'm very like closed. Like I don't see why people would do things. So, so I'm like, you playing? Like you? I got there's you. no way these things are like real. Yeah. Is am I aware of it? I think it's just too overwhelming to it's actually too take in. It's like, too overwhelming. Yeah, it, it is. It's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's overwhelming because you got the guys telling the girls how effed up they are. And you got the girls telling the guys how effed up. I don't need you. Don't want you. You got the girl. I, I can go get whoever I want. And it's like, bro, do you really want all of that? Mm -hmm. Like, that's yeah. Like you got to be playing because there's no way you want to be doing all of this every day. Cause if, but it's also guys that have probably never had, like, 
I don't know. Like I'm like, you gotta be playing. You yeah. know what I mean? Because being an athlete, you you know you have you you have access to different things. So you yeah. don't or and when, when you, you speak on that. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are we talking? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, what are we talking? Don't like? get anybody. Like, yeah, we'll get that. You, does that make sense? Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, like yeah. without trying to be like going around the question. I really just be like, what? I don't really be knowing. Yeah. What, what's going on? I think topics make me interesting, but I don't yeah. know the clash. Okay. So with that, I know you said that you like some of the things that we talk about on here. You a fan of nice and neat. What are some? What are some of the things that have grabbed you to where you like, yo? That's something interesting that I would have wanted to be a part of. That conversation specifically. I didn't come in with a conversation. I came in with a, pers a thought of like meeting people where they are, right? Like how do we talk about relationships with meeting people where they are rather than telling people what they need to hear? More so saying, hey man, here's what I've learned. Not what I can tell you from like, this is what you should do. Cause I hate when people talk at me rather than talking to me. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's where my conversation is like, we need to learn to meet people where they are. Like in my fitness journey, like when I meet people, I'm like, you drink 10 sodas, let's try to drink five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we were just talking about, you were talking about how you meet people, you like to meet people where they are, right? Mm -hmm. So like, how long have you been married? Four years. Four years, right? That's a, been you, my you, girl 10. Been with her 10 years. Yeah. Okay, so you've been more married for four years, been with your girl, your wife 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. So you know a little, but you know a little something about controversy, yep. navigating adversity, um, communication, yep. those things, right? Um, what are some things that you could? I'm a terrible communicator. You're a terrible communicator. Terrible. Okay. I'm solution right away. Mm. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I'm all, I'm right to the solution. Okay. Solution. Okay. I don't. I don't like. Mm -hmm. I don't like. I can tell you, I don't like any debating. I don't want to go back and forth. I don't want to. Now, has that impacted negatively or, or positively? Negative, right? Because she needs emotional yeah. connection yeah. between yeah. me. I'm always solution right away. I've mm -hmm. learned that. That's not okay, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that. But that that's real work because I'm like, I don't deal in drama. I deal in solution. You know what uh -huh. I mean? But she deals in like, I just want clarity. And I'm like, I gave you the clarity. I said, okay. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And it's not healthy. I say it's but not for healthy. her, it's healthy for me, but it's not healthy for her. And so you got to start to, when you're working with these individuals, it's like, you know, go, okay, I hear you. One of when my marriage counselor said to us, he says, you have to remember that you guys speak two different languages. Mm -hmm. You speak Farsi and he speaks Indian or uh, what not Indian. He speaks Spanish. And you may not, you don't understand that language. You may pick up a few words of their language, but those aren't your native languages, right? And that gave me the most clarity in the world. It still didn't help. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> gave <me some> clarity. <laughs> it gave me That's clarity. Honest, still it. didn't help, <laughs> right? Um, and that and and that could be from like bullish my personality. Uh, you know, I'm I'm stubborn. I'm like you got to understand who you are mm -hmm. in your relationship too. Like a lot of people run from their personal traits. Like I'm very stubborn and I'm very like. Everything gonna be all right. I'm a everything is gonna be all right mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. It's never that big of a deal, and it's all it, to them. It's always that big of a deal, mm -hmm. right? And um, but I've learned to cater to those feelings, right? Like as best I can. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you can talk. Counselor said you got ten minutes. You got ten minutes to get it out, baby girl. And if not, you lose them. So we have worked on the ten minute rule. You got ten minutes. What is ten minute rule? Is that? Ten minute rule. She can say whatever she needs to say about the topic in ten minutes and give me a chance to speak back. And if I say okay, yes, I have the chance to walk away from that conversation. She, it's like from a psychological perspective, she's like, men can't withstand sitting and having deep conversations. Well, that's some people say that. My brother would say that's not true. He like he's the opposite. He wants to talk. His wife doesn't. Right. So you just I'm the ten minute guy. Well, give me ten minutes. Well, what if what if she, she couldn't collect her thoughts in 10 minutes. You gotta go, we gotta take a break. But you could come back to that. I don't like coming back to topics. But what What if, I mean, if, if nothing was solved in that 10 minutes, you know what I mean? Because you could, she couldn't collect her thoughts. How do you guys move forward with that situation? My wife is very, uh, Dom is very solution oriented once she realizes that I'm very stubborn. So it's like, all right, uh, but I'm also appeasing her. So I'm very much like, I heard you, I understand, it won't happen again kind of guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like that, um, if it's something that I'm just a stickler on. Um, but most of the time, you know, 
which is a fault, she deals with it. She deals with certain things that just have come with the territory of being my wife. Like, all right, that's just who the boss is going to be. All right. And I deal with certain things that's just, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially when you're trying to go to long game, you can't pick at everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know man, what I mean? You just, mm-hmm. you, just, you, just, um, you just reminded me of something. All right, so Jalon said this a long time ago, right, when we first started. He said that he doesn't think you should compromise in a relationship. Am I correct? Yes. Remember that? I spoke with Boss off and camera. And Boss. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember, I remember Boss saying that you should compromise, right? It's always a compromise. It's always a compromise. Yeah. What's my, your idea about that? I just know she's gonna change. She's she's evolving. She's changing as a woman. As, like she has three kids, she's gonna want to do different things in her life. She's a stay-at-home mom. Like there's gonna be a point that I have to be ready to compromise her not wanting to be at home, right? Or these, I'm changing. I got There's you. different things about me that's evolving that mm-hmm. I wasn't five years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm I'm in a different. I'm a different person than mm-hmm. I was five years ago when it comes down to who I am in the business world. So she has to go, oh, shit, I got to adjust to that, right? That compromise of me saying I'm going to do this and those old viewpoints that I had, I'm like, ah, I'm still principle-based, but I'm not. There's certain things that I'm, you know, you got to compromise yeah. on because I'm doing something that we didn't we didn't think about. Yeah. You know what I mean? And especially we try, we're trying to play the long game. Yeah. That's me. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. So – my understanding of the of the word compromise wasn't a healthy understanding mm. then, then when you said it right mm-hmm. my understanding of the word compromise at that time was somebody's doing something they don't want to do mm. that's just like that is what i've always visually seen compromise be in relationships okay cool this person is getting what they want while this person is not receiving anything at all that right, they want. Right, right. They're just doing it because they love this person. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't believe in it. Well, she thought that was harmful to a relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was, I, I still think that's actually kind of problematic for a relationship. Mm-hmm. Long term. Right, long term. Well, it's short term. Um, how I look at compromise now is, yo, I, could, I, I can communicate with this person well enough for them to effectively tell me why this works for them. And whether I understand it in the moment or not, I understand this person well enough to know that they're making a sound decision. So I can go through the journey with them of compromise. Like when I looked at compromise before, it was like, oh, you just want me to do something that I don't want to do. That doesn't make sense to me. Well, well for me, I married her. So for me, I, mm. I trust her. Mm. Yeah. So that's where the yeah. compromise immediately comes in. Immediately. Mm. You're right yeah. for me. It was like, I chose you as my life partner. I trust you. you I have to. That's what we talk about. Trust you too. Yeah. I trust that's me too. You trust you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, 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 you know, like, so that's where it comes in. And that's it's like, the biggest one. You trust you. Yeah. yeah. That's why you, you make like, decisions. Yeah, you, you, right. I you trust you. her, but you trust you because you made that decision. decision. 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah. 1,000%. Yeah. Right. Yes. And it's important to, like, I put this on. You know the new threads. Right. You've you know, been threading lately. You've been going crazy on the new threads. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I love it. We've been threading lately, <laughs> um, but I think that people, um, people really don't trust. Like it, it doesn't make sense when people agree to be with somebody or be married to someone and still try to withhold their openness and love and compromise from them, right? Because they don't trust them. It doesn't yeah. make sense. I think when you commit to someone, you say yeah. When you say yes. Yep. And yo, I want you to be my wife. I want you to be my girl. Then that is like admission to compromise, yep. right? And I don't think it should be. Then I still have to di- like distinguish: should I compromise? Should I hold back? Should I give more? I don't think that sh- it should be like that. I think once you commit to it, that's your yes. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I think that that's how it should be all the time, man. You said I agree. you said uh, it's some things about you that your wife just like, man. That's just that's just boss. That's just my husband. Mm-hmm. Right. And granted, when we were younger, we would hear like grandma say that or, you know, like an older couple say that. And I've always looked at that as like, man, that's like a beautiful place that you could get to in a relationship to mm-hmm. where you look at your partner and you'd be like, yeah, I don't like it. But like that's that's, that's yeah, that's that's boss. Yeah, that's boss going to do that. Right. How long did it take you guys to get there? Oh, a lot of you go through. <laughs> yeah, it, take, it takes a while. I don't have a time stamp on it but it it, it was I'm sure you do the same 1000 percent. i think it's just it me and dom have just come to a like she's very open and like i don't know like we we like we're very honest with ourselves like i don't know how to be a wife <laughs> i don't know how to be a husband Man. yeah i got him her parents been married 30 some years but you know they we still you don't this is you you know what i mean so mm-hmm. we coming into this with this like 
honesty of like, we, we on this chapter and journey together. We have good examples, yep. right? Her parents are phenomenal, right? And it's just like, you got the examples and that's what you, you want to be around people that are, that where you want to go to, mm -hmm. right? Ultimately. And I think that's where it became the point of like, I don't know how to do this either. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's the openness and truthfulness of like, man, I'm, I'm on this journey with you. If, if you could be that honest with me, I could be that honest with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we're very like, when you look at it, you're fortunate to love someone in this capacity, right? To be with them and like the, the norms don't bother, like I don't care about that. You know, she deals with what she deals with, I deal with what I deal with. And I tell her all the time, you know who I am as a man and how I have to provide. And I, that is what the idea of what I thought husband was. You know, and so she's opened me up to be more patient. My kids have opened me up to be more patient. I got to take time off. I got to be. So it's a healthy, like I'm looking at her like, man, you teaching me how to actually be a husband. You know what I mean? Outside of just thinking I got to go to work. You know what I mean? And so I, t you know, things that I've done to say, hey, babe, it's, it's, it's okay to, mm -hmm. against what someone may have said online or what, you know, it's okay to raise kids and still have fun. You know what I mean? And so. Um, it's just, it's just a you. It's all new. None of us, no matter how we've all seen it, this we're on our chapters. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know what I mean? So we can tell somebody else is like, here's what I've learned. You know what I mean? That's where we are. It's like here's what I've learned in on our on our growth trajectory because our grandmas and dads and moms can tell us, but until we go through it, it's our first time. Yeah. Have you ever gone through anything uh, a point in your life where you were like, yo? I'm not openly loving my woman because it's gonna make me look soft. You know what I'm saying? Oh <laughs> man, I was the king of that. Like, uh, <laughs> I, it wasn't about looking soft. It was like, it, it, for me, it was like, I just didn't know how to openly love my woman out. Like, I just didn't know how to openly love my woman. It wasn't like- It wasn't a fear? Just unapologetically, you didn't know how to be- I didn't, I'm like, this is my girl. Like, well, nigga, I don't gotta- it, it was never like a, and I was just like, man, I just gotta always be this boss nigga. You know what I mean? This, I, we don't see those examples. Yeah, yeah like it was always, examples, yeah, it was hard. always like this, this yeah. energy. It was never yeah. like a, oh man, I gotta openly like the nah. It, she felt it, but I didn't know. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like a fear. It was just like I'm doing me. Like the bravado of you know, nigga, I, I get it out the mud. I ain't making it football. Look, I did this. I'm building this. Like I'm a. You know, got my girl, we building this family. Like that was the run with, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It was never the, the yeah, let, let me slow, put, let me slow down and let me just acknowledge her yeah. and make her feel like this. Yeah, romantic. I never, yeah. 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 When yeah. you get to that That's point. That's interesting. Because I, I'll say outside looking in, I feel like you do an incredible job of showing the world that you're a family man without pressing it on people. Like this is just a part of your life. Yeah, I, I, you know, man, uh, it's a pillar of who I am. I think that is, my wife is an example of who I am. When she's away from me, she represents me, and I'm away from her, I represent her. And she knows I'm a nut, and uh, you know what I mean? I'm crazy. And my, uh, you know, crazy enough, my wife has never cursed at me or screamed at me wow. uh, in 10 years, ever. Like, we, we do not, like, it's not like, we don't scream at each other. We we get at it, but it's never been, yes. like, I. so she's made me more of a calm spirit, fellowship. right? Because she talks to me with so much compassion and love. I'm like, I can't even meet her with the energy that mm -hmm. I have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm this, pat I, I can't even meet her with that because she never, she's never given me that energy back. Yeah. Now you're just you, being a bully. Now I'm just being a fucking dickhead. Yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna be a dickhead to the person that love me, yeah. showing me love. So... You know, it makes you calm. It makes you go, man, I, I just want to, I'm going to love you the way you want to be loved, the mm -hmm. best way I can. I can't give it all to you. I'm trying, mm -hmm. but I can't be everything. But, you know, and, and, and she knows that. I try my fucking hardest. But, you know, I'm. it's learning how to, you know what I mean, be in that way to the, but it's not, for me, it's like, I've got to the point, like I fell off, I stopped doing social media for a little while because I just got to a point where I was like, I just want to focus on my family and my kids mm -hmm. and be, you know, intentional with the people that are in my life. Um, and that's really what it boiled down to for me. And, and my wife was just such a dom. I don't like saying my wife, a dom is just like a, but she's not an object or a thing. It's like, she is dom, you know what I mean? I want her to have her, that's a thing right now. It's like, I want her to be Dominique, not 
my wife and the mother of my kids. It's like mm-hmm. Dominique is my partner. You know what I'm saying? No, that's and, dope. And um, you know, because we get so caught up in the title. It's important. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, that's my partner. Like that's that we in this together. You know what I mean? Like you know, it's, <laughs> you know, I honor her because what she's given me, I could no no other woman has given me and would want. You know what I mean? My kids, but man, I I'm just I would say I'm very very lucky in the sense of like I. God just put his hand on me, but I prayed, bro. Like I mm. pray really, really hard, you know, just cause you know, I work in the entertainment industry now and I'm all around the country and it's all, you see everything. Mm. I've had access to, you know, all these conversations you get to be a part of. And I just, I was just like, I, right, I'll be single forever. I just can't do it. Like I just couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. Like I, my, and I've been very fortunate to just, you know, my wife Dom has been very, you know what I mean? <laughs> Dom has been very, very like, understanding of my stubborn ways and you know ultimately we we trying to make it work you know there is no I, golden ticket for me i'm just I don't trying to brush day. over that though i want to brush over that because you say you're in the entertainment industry right and it's hard right as a single man in the industry in the, in the industry is hard right because you got all this access right and as you're on your climb to success the access becomes Reality. granted 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 mm-hmm. all right <laughs> yeah and 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 i want to know what type of discipline do you have to have to to have that at your fingertips and and, and say n- no to temptation because I got this thing over here that I'm really serious about? Yo, man, you know, I, th- these aren't catchphrases. Like, this is action items from my life, I swear to God. Temptation without discipline means nothing. People tell you they discipline mm. without temptation. You ain't disciplined. You're not disciplined. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have you know the opportunity. Right. Like, so, so for me, it was like, same way I approached the fitness industry, for me, it was like, I'm gonna be the most disciplined human that I can be, but my marketing may change, but my principles have to stay the same. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was like, I have to be principled. So as much as I'm in these rooms and I, no one excited me that much to where it would waver in what my principles were. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He put on different clothes, marketing may change. I may be, you know, I may be a little bit more fly, I may have something different on, but if it wasn't grounded to my principles, I couldn't shift that. Mm-hmm. And that's what it was for me. And that's, it's like, you know, people tell you, I don't eat bread. When the last time somebody put bread in front of you? You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't got discipline if, ain't no, if, if, you, if you don't got access to it. And we've all had access, right? And so having access was like, all right, I'm just not on that wave right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But do I enjoy a healthy conversation? You know, counseling is like, I don't call it therapy. It's counseling. Like, we talking to our counselor. Like, just, and, um, and we were able to say things about like, man, you're on the road. Well, if his friends are out, you can't expect him to stand in the room. Yeah, you're right. That that makes sense. If he if they go into the strip club, he he got probably gonna go to the strip club. You just gotta trust that. Hey, that, that, don't th- mean that third party in conversations to make things realistic. Mm-hmm. It was just yeah, it was just a balance of yeah. like yeah, like all right, cool. Yep. You ain't that he's valid in that or he's not valid in that. You have to hear her in this, you know. And I'm like, all right, cool. I struggle with being told what to do. Mm-hmm. I struggle like. You know, yeah. I'm like, ah, yeah. Don't tell me what to do. Like that's a. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell. Don't tell me what to I'm, do. I'm, I'm, I'm used to living like this by myself. Yeah, but you know, when you want to see yourself be healthy and happy with somebody yeah. and with my kids, now it's like, all right, I'm. This is for my kids. Yeah. yeah. I want. I want. I want to be healthy and happy, and I, she. She. She deserves that. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And especially when you get out here, you, no disrespect, you just realize, like, man, she deserves this, and and so putting her on that pillar becomes. The, the trophy, not the trophy wife, but it becomes the thing that you're like, man, I am, this is this is my prized possession. This mm. is my queen that we yeah. talked about mm. that sit next to me that we, you know, started this conversation mm-hmm. on earlier. It's like, you become excited about that on the struggle, mm-hmm. right up, right? Because they mm-hmm. earn that throne title with you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I'm, if I'm, that makes sense to kind of fact. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna ask you this. You said, you know, if you go out with your friends, you know, like you may not be doing something, but if your friends go out, you're going to go roll with them. Like, where's the line between like, yeah, that's what my friends do. And like, I don't do that. That ain't my business. Got you. I'm very intentional in my household. And what somebody else do ain't my business. Well, uh, such and such, that ain't our business. We ain't bringing nobody else problem in our house. They're not taking ours and theirs. We're going to stay healthy right here. If it's me, I got in trouble. Cool. Get me. Yeah. <laughs> Light you. me up. Don't, but make, it, don't no, make it about my friends. Don't you know? please don't make because what somebody else do ain't got ain't my problems. Mm-hmm. We'll be in trouble all day long. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't I can't control what somebody else do. You gotta just trust me. Cause trust is more of a compliment than love. Yeah. Yo, with 
Trust is more of a compliment than love. Trust is more of a compliment than love. When you think about life and you say, I trust you, that's more of a compliment than love because people mm. can love you and be crazy. But if I can trust you, man, mm. that is like, all right, that's the ultimate honor. Yeah. Okay. That's the ultimate honor. I can trust okay. you. Okay. Man, as you, you know, you talk about being in different rooms and business getting better for you. you know, how do you and your wife, how do you and Dom maintain the balance between the work and the life, the marriage the, the, that you guys have, because I'd imagine that it's just, it's very, it seems very busy for you. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and challenging, but you guys are constantly as, as you're talking to talking about growing together. Yeah. Like how do you guys maintain that balance throughout, I guess your success? Cause it's mainly yours right now because yeah. she's, being her job right now is being at home, being a stay home wife. It's her success. My success is her success. Mm -hmm. It's not isolated. It's ours. Everything I do is an indirect reflection of how she allows and feeds my soul to go do what I do. And it's 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 a powerful thing. And so um to Shonda Duckett, black woman, T I A Bank, gave me this tool and it was the most it, it was like phenomenal. She was like, I give a hundred percent to everything, but it's in a pie chart of a hundred percent. So I give 30% when I'm with my kids, 10% I give 100% and sometimes that's 50% I give 100% when I'm with, and when you're, the, the moments that I have when I'm home, I'm trying to give 100% mm -hmm. of when I'm home. I'm trying to, so, hey babe, we're going to dinner. I'm working on giving 100% at dinner to my wife. We've mm -hmm. seen you, uh, we've been out yep. and seen, running to each other at dinner. It's like, I want to be intentional, intentional. Uh, of, of giving her 100%, even if that's the only dinner date night we got. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's finding that balance, and, and, and I don't have it yet. You know, mm -hmm. I'll be honest. Like, I, I'm not, like, I'm really trying to work on filling the void of date nights and working on all those things mm -hmm. that she wants me to be despite the busy schedule. Um, I haven't balanced it. It's in my subconscious of what Tashonda told me and how she's balanced it. And I'm working towards giving 100 percent to the 30 percent when I'm with my friends. I give 100 percent of being intentional and finding that balance in that. But I don't have the answer because yeah. I'm still a work in progress. I'm trying to figure it all out because success comes at you fast. Mm -hmm. You know, 15 years I've been grinding, 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 grinding. Nobody knew what I was doing. And all of a sudden people think it's like, oh, shit. Yep. He's just like and it's like, nah, dog, like. I've been working my ass off and now it's like, now I got to show up and be more intentional. Mm -hmm. So my wife, it's like, you know, she is very like it, you know, it's a challenge between, Hey, you doing that again? Are you going over there? And I'm like, man, you know, but this year I took a break. I didn't travel as much as I normally travel. So I took about three months off of the road, which was not normal for me. And, um, it made the, all the different, we like each other. So it's not like one of those, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Me and my wife actually enjoy each other's company. So, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I can be home That's and be like, yeah. yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? We, we actually like each other. So it's fun for, you know, if when we're at home and, you know, we do like, we watch Family Feud. We do things like, yep. like, you know, shit like that. That's yep. super, super easy. And it's like, we don't need to go do a whole bunch of stuff. And, um, you know, but success will make you think you do. But I just, again, principle, I go back to the principle. The market is changing. I, okay, we're doing all these different things. What are my principles? What matters to me the most? And despite, and I, and I, I know what God put me in the room for. So I, God put me in a room to be a principle guy. I learned my superpower. So like in all these rooms I've been fortunate enough to be in, I'm like, man, God, why you keep putting me in these rooms? And I go, I got to keep showing up as myself because the day I change, I ain't going to be in these rooms. Straight up. Mm-hmm. Every, every time I question it, I'm like, I got to keep being myself. I've sat down with Jamie Dimon, Phil Knight, room just like this, four people. I'm, in, I'm like, I've questioned those moments. Like, man, I'm with Phil Knight. I know, I mean, I ain't make it. I ain't even, I ain't like, I'm with Phil Knight in, a, in, this, in his office. And it's me, Kev, Phil Knight, and one other person. And I'm like, and I'm questioning why am I here? And then I go, I did something to be here. I ain't just here. Mm. There's an idea, there's a perspective, there's something. What were we just talking about? You know what I'm saying? We were just talking about this. Wow. You know what I mean? And so, you know, a lot of times, yeah, it, it's you got to start to own when you're in those rooms and stop questioning. Because then when you question, you don't, you don't, you're not you in your- You don't perform. You don't, you don't, you don't perform, bro. Yeah, you're I was just talking to him about this, bro. Yeah. Like, my story is this, bro. I, went, I, played, I started playing football as a junior in high school. It was my first time playing football, right? I got on the field. I was like, damn, am I supposed to be out here? Right? I did well. Uh, became a team captain my senior year, got a scholarship to San Jose State, started as a true freshman at San Jose State. I'm still on the field like, damn, am I supposed to be out here? Four years go by, I win three-time three all-whack. 
uh, go undrafted, start in the Super Bowl, start my second year. And I'm still thinking, like, am I supposed to be out here? And I keep thinking, am I supposed to be out here? Even though if I turn around and look back at what I've done, the track record says I am supposed to be here, right? And I think that's um, that's a, that's an interesting perspective to have. And it's crazy that we a lot of us have that, yep. even though if we take a look, We've done exactly what we need to do to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we only think that about ourselves, but from the outside looking in, people look at us and be like, yo, like, well, hell yeah, you should be there. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy absolutely. how that shit works, man. Um, fellas, anything else before we wrap up? Oh man. I'm, anything oh, we man. anything before before we wrap up? Boss, um, I do want to ask you this. What is your um what is your philosophy when it comes to like doing business with people, right? Deals business getting involved with companies what's your philosophy is there do you just look for um certain alignment of principles or you just look for a booming company how, how do you how does that work with you because of ventures right we do there, there's so I, i'm a managing partner of venture fund hb ventures and, and we're doing so sometimes we have to like a company you know um but if it's intentional to me it, like there's numbers there's like market on the venture side but for me when i look at a deal i have to really love the company i gotta really feel like can i create without me can i come up with concepts and ideas that don't involve myself hmm. you know what i mean in my likeness because that's what has brought value to c4 their body path order these companies that i've been liquid iv like when you when i look back it's like i wouldn't put myself in them i was like hey this person this person this person it was like laying like, I like this idea for that person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and that's how I like to look at a company. Can I really bring a thought process that the internal people don't get to see? And um, C4 has been a great example, man. Like, I'm, I'm that's my unicorn right now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's like, bro, Kev took a gamble. Like, he, he's talking about it more. That's the first deal Kev has never took capital up front and <clears throat> significant. And it turned out phenomenal for us you know mm -hmm. um and we're still building right and so that that's where you get a little bit of momentum and track and then you just continue to build and i i just look at if somebody's excited and you got to find a good founder and ceo and people that want to drive these companies forward that's it like you got to have people got to be passionate mm -hmm. about what they want to do and then for us even if it's not direct for me like there's a company where we can't invest in right now but i love the founder mm -hmm. and i'm like i got somebody for you like we can't do it, but I'm a steal. I want to see you succeed, and maybe when you go do this, we'll come back. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? Because we can't invest in certain companies at certain periods of time, but I still want to be a part of your mm -hmm. process because I still believe in free game. I believe in free game. Like, hey, bro, it's, it's game is like, here. You go, take it. I don't care. Yeah. Because most people don't apply. So that's kind of how we, how I like to look at it. Yeah. That's why you give away for free. Yeah. Yeah. Most people ain't gonna apply it. They ain't gonna apply Just it. to piggyback off of that question, when it comes to investing in companies, um. I know you gotta like the company, but do you ever look at like, yo, this is this is a, a this is a black company? For sure, for sure, super intentional. Um, I just wish we 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 knew how to position it better, right? With my partnership with Chase, we're looking for black founders, black like you know um, uh, CEOs and people that are running companies. Yeah, we love like Kev is investing in black animation companies, and you know. It's just a lot of times we come in with a bravado already that it's like we that we, we look down upon and it's like no we want to you want to look across the table and see somebody like yourself. Mm -hmm. So Kev has done a phenomenal job giving him credit in Black Founders. For me, it's like I'm I'm I like to look at things and go with companies that I like and I don't and then I find out who people are behind the scenes. But I have an intention behind Black Founders now, um, but it wasn't the focus in the beginning. It mm -hmm. was just like I needed to establish myself as a business person mm -hmm. before I was like, all right, because I didn't have the expertise. People didn't see me in that way. Most people yeah. knew, yeah. Um, if you know about what we've done with, you know, Fabletics and the things, the companies that we're working for now, it's like, oh, people go, man, it's, there's some things that they, these guys have done well. And mm -hmm. so I'm following, you know, and it's fortunate, I'm fortunate enough to have solid people in my life and I really sit with like super smart people. Like I'm, these, them conversations that don't apply, like, I swear to man, just go sit in rooms and, like, be in con even if you don't know what the hell they talking about, mm -hmm. just go sit in conversations. Like, go take classes and just be in part of the conversation. I promise you, you'll look up and you'll be like, you'll be in a conversation, go, 
That's what they was talking about. I can apply that right now. But a lot of times we don't want to give the time to the boring conversation because mm -hmm. it's not apply it's not applicable. It's not to entertainment. It's right like, now. Yeah. Right? But mm -hmm. it's the long term game. And so a lot of times I will go sit and be a part of the conversations that didn't apply at the moment and learn what the marketing strategies were. And you start to look back behind a lot of these companies and you go, Man, it ain't really rocket science. It's just focus. And like, you know, like for me, I was when just trained. I, I remember, like, I was just, I mean, just trained made so much, made money in merch. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I couldn't believe I'm like, people buying just trained merch like this? Like, I'm like, what the hell? I just, this was, then it, it makes you dive in something a lot deeper. And then, but I got that foundation from Danny Duncan. This is how I shifted the merch business. I was selling clothes, I had my assistant shipping clothes, and um, met this kid in Boston, got connected to him. This is a real story, I swear to God. And, uh, I didn't know who Danny Duncan was. This kid came and saw me and he was like, apparently Danny Duncan was a fan of me. He was a, Danny Duncan's a big YouTuber. I don't know if y'all know who he is. Like he's, he's massive, but he was a trainer in homeless before. But he was like, bro, I, when he found out he was coming, to, he, he knew me. He was like, I got to meet boss. I got to meet boss. He's somebody I looked up to. I'm like, all right, I'll meet this. I don't know shit about YouTube. I don't know shit about what's at that time, you know, six, seven years ago, I had no clue about shit. And y'all can curse on here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Danny, Danny came and met me, and I'm like, he was like, he he does like jackass shit, and I'm like, bro, and I'm like, what kind of drugs you be on? He's like, I don't do no drugs, I don't drink, like my my whole life, I don't do anything. I'm like, what do you mean? So he started breaking down his merch business, and I'm like, bro, there's no way you making hundreds of thousand dollars a month in merch. Like what? And he's like, he starts showing me his the numbers, the numbers, and I'm like, dog, you gotta be fit, bro. Who are you? What do you mean you're 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 making this type of money a month? He's like, bro, here's come meet these people over at Killer Merch. They'll do all the shipping for you. And I said, I'm sorry. So there's companies that so they he put me on game. I went over to Killer Merch. They started doing my packaging and shipping. I went downtown LA. I I went crazy downtown LA. I started just buying any and everything and putting <laughs> like I ain't, I was like a kid in a candy shop. And um and then I went and sat with Bradley Martin and I and I would never say his numbers. Bradley Martin was like, I made this much money on Black Friday. I'm like, oh y'all boys really making real money out here, like real real money. Even to this day, I'm like these guys like making real 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 money. And oh, so nice, bro. And it shifted my focus. And I was like, oh, just train got to get into this lane. And they gave me the game. And so I was like. Uh, somebody I didn't want to meet, somebody I was like, I don't know who he is. This was like, I'm doing a favor for this guy that I met in Boston on some, like, he a fan of me, some, the, being a trainer. I don't have a clue. And end up, this young kid came and gave me game. Me and Danny still close to this day. And I'll never forget when Danny sent me a screenshot of his bank account. And he, I was like, what? And you've seen his shirts, Virginity Rocks, all those clothes mm -hmm. of his oh, and God. Zoomies. Like, wow, this dude is killing it. When I tell you killing it, and I, I, I'm i like, bro, put me on with Killer Merch. Like, I'm so thankful to, to Buddy for just aligning me and giving me the game. And I didn't know what I was missing. But because I was willing to be a part of a conversation that I didn't have a clue about, it opened me up to free game for him to and go, I, bro, I just want you to be a part of this. And mm. changed my whole perspective on the on the uh, merch wow, business okay. and really what these guys were making. Wow. You mentioned long term. I want to go back to since we talk about business. I know we're yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. I want to go back to the C4 deal. I want to, you to I want you to just talk about the foresight that you have to have to be willing to not take money up front. And I, I would assume, yep. you know, work out some type of equity deal or yeah. or revenue split on, on, on the back end um, that you have to have to, to see that. Does that come from just years of experience? Does that come from just doing business uh, going bad like how, how does that work no nope, no nope. how, how do you have that mental foresight no experience so i it wasn't for me i i they were paying me early mm -hmm. i've been with c4 eight years but what it was when i got pro when i was like really in the fitness industry and people were like oh we want you we want you one of the things for me was like brand alignment nobody taught me this it was more like if i go run for this money right now and these people offering me four times what i'm getting paid right now if i go leave I'm gonna look like the dude that just, I'm all over the place. So I'm like, C4, I want y'all to see what's happening. Will y'all get, like, I'm here with y'all if y'all with me, you know what I'm saying? And I promise you we are gonna build something better. And they took the gamble on me the same way. And I just, I had no foresight. It was learning as I go. Like, I, I'm not, I'm never gonna say, like the answer, I don't have the answers to the test. A lot mm -hmm. of times you, I'm in it and I'm learning it. And now I have game and I've learned it and I've been able to spin it 
But early on, it was like, hey, I'm taking the same risk. You know what I'm saying? Because I left Saudi Arabia to come back to be with Kev. You know what I mean? 10 years ago, because I was living in Saudi Arabia. So this was like, all right, I, it wasn't about the money. It was about the brand building for me. I always wanted to build a brand. And so when C4 gave me the deal, it was like, oh, man, this is a legacy play. Like, and they believed in the vision. We, we, they invested in things and concepts and ideas that I wanted. And this is before they had all the top athletes. And now the company is like on fire, mm -hmm. like really doing, like I remember some of the other companies that were like killing it and we weren't in a space, but you know, C4 been around 20 some odd years, you know what I mean? And it wasn't, the, I can't tell you I had the foresight. It was more about, I didn't want to look like the dude jumping from one brand to the mm -hmm. next. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be right here. And that's what it was. And, and, and a lot of times, that's what it is for me. It's like, you know, guys have probed me, like, I'll pay you double, triple what Kev pay you. And I'm like, bro, I ain't for sale. <laughs> I ain't for sale, dog. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not for sale. I know, I know Duke said that we was gonna close it out, but I did wanna ask you this before we before we wrap up. I know you've been a hard worker, bro. You've been through, you face a lot of adversity, whether it was family adversity, I'm sure financial adversity at yeah. some point in time growing up, and you've just been a hard worker, and that's just what you do. How did your work ethic change once you became a husband and a father? <laughs> My wife would say it's sickening. It's sickening. It's, it's like, I shouldn't be here today, right? I just had my kid yesterday. I shouldn't be here. We just got home, but you know, <laughs> literally. Uh, literally. Um, but um, I saw an opportunity to share a platform. I saw an, today was work and I'm like, these things don't, you don't get a second chance. Hmm. You know what I mean? And so, she's been very like again dom has been like very very supportive of like we in this together like just talk to me and tell me like you know what i mean because you can't tell you can't you ain't physically stop me yeah. right so it's more of an understanding and I, there's times where i'm very intentional with being home and putting my kids to sleep and so things like that so i'm very like it's a balance between i gotta i just gotta go you don't get a second chance that's kind of your philosophy you don't get a second chance bro this ain't this ain't guaranteed Everybody ain't gonna always be like, oh, that's that guy. You don't get a second chance. You better take advantage while you got while you got people, you know what I mean, interested in what you believe in, your thoughts, your perspective. And so you gotta be, I, like, I wanna be careful and truthful with people about how I, you know what I mean? And so that's my, I got one chance and right, it's right now. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Boss, man, really appreciate it. I appreciate y'all for having me, man. Seriously. Thank you, man. This is um, this is special to us, man, because you know you're somebody that we know, and someone that's close to us, and um, you could have been anywhere, right? You could have been being a father, but you came, um, so we're honored and we're grateful. So thank you. I thank appreciate y'all for giving me the opportunity because nah. you don't get always get a chance. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gave me a chance to be on y'all show, man. I, it's an honor. I'm proud of what y'all have built, man. Y'all should be proud of yourselves, like. You got us have a upward trajectory of a lot, a lot more opportunity, and you know a lot of people are watching. Thank so, you, bro. You know, yeah, thank you, bro. Fellas. Seriously, I'm good. Oh man, you you a rock star, bro. No, I appreciate <laughs> yeah, it, man. Yeah, you a rock star, yeah, dog. Appreciate it, dog. Um, listen, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tapping in with us. Make sure you guys are subscribed to us on all social networks, uh, all streaming platforms at Nice Need the Podcast. Follow myself on Instagram at Duke. Follow Omar at Omar.Bonin and Jalan at just.jalan. Just Jalan. Yes. Follow Jalan at just.jalan. And boss at Just Train. Just Train. Uh, much love, much gratitude. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. I'm Boss. And this is another episode of Nice and Neat. And that's that on that. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road to rest get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand.